is Maria and this is Knitting as Therapy, my podcast, episode number two. Today we're gonna start, as always, with some finished objects. There are not a lot of them during this period of time, as I had some winter holidays, winter rest. And um, then we will switch to works in progress and some acquisitions and plans that I have for the next period of time. So, let's start! The main thing I would love to talk about is what I'm wearing. And this is a mobile sleepover that I made as a present for my boyfriend, but it fits me well too. <laughs> so that's why I am wearing it today. Uh, this one is made uh, with a Regia Premium Sock Yarn uh, with Merino Yak Nylon Blend uh, on 3.5 mm needles. Uh, that's a very popular pattern by Petit Knit. There is also Moby Sweater, Moby neck is coming really soon as i noticed in instagram and uh, here is the moby sleepover so about let's talk about some texture uh, in the, this pattern you start with the back panel um, where you just work some flat part of a uh, cable uh, double most double most stitch so several versions of different cablings and textures the main part is here i like the most i think it's double most stitches um i think i also had this one of, on some of my old sweaters but i didn't know the name of it and i liked it as well <laughs> in that sweater um, um so talking about the collar, it's double folded, uh, made on 3mm needles. Uh, the armholes are also made on 3mm needles with some talent bind off. Same for the bottom part, it's also made on 3mm needles with some talent bind off. This time I succeed in doing my talent bind off really <laughs> better than previously as uh, this uh, uh, slipover was made with two strands of Regia sock yarn it was quite sturdy to, to work on uh, but it's really thick and warm and I think this one is it's fine as uh, it's a uh, thin sock yarn it worked well or even with two strands hold together um, I tried it also, as I didn't want to add a mohair strand here, um, I have tried also making it with just a single strand of a fingering weight, fingering weight merino, and it was just too loose, as for me. I don't know, I'm not really a loose knitter, I'm a tight knitter in general, but for petite knit patterns, I made gauge really nicely. And her gauge is mostly similar to mine. I don't need to change the needle sizes or look for some different yarn, uh, as some knitters may do sometimes if they are too loose or too, too tight. Um, so yeah, I think this is it. Uh, for the main version, uh, the only change that I made uh, I made the armholes a bit bigger, just for my taste, to work well, especially considering the effect of this uh, ribbon on the bottoms. Um, it takes some space from the armholes in general, from the underarm part. Uh, so I uh, just worked uh, according to the pattern itself, uh, just a bit longer than it was told in the pattern itself. Uh, the only thing uh, to be considered in this uh, change 
uh, that you need to check uh, when connecting in round if your front panel is on the same round according to the pattern that the back panel. So you need to have them both at the same place to work just in round the same pattern on both sides, you know, not to switch all the time. Um, yeah, so I think this is it about the finished object. Um, I'm not sure if I can consider it as a finished object or <laughs> or just a rework. I mentioned in the previous uh, podcast that I had an issue with um, Italian bind off. Uh, so the first one is Egea Sweater by Egea Knit. Uh, I've already shown this one. It's a very beautiful pattern with some cablings all around the body and with um, a half brioche stitch on the back and on the sleeves. So here is also a detail, beautiful cable detail on the sleeve. I like it a lot. Maybe you can see it a bit closer like this. And mostly alpaca yarn on six millimeter needles and I did my uh, bottom ribbon on five millimeter needles firstly and uh, made in Thailand by Dov and I was just unhappy with the feet it was floppy it was just drapey and I do not expect it from from the ribbon you know on the bottom part of the sweater so I had to change it I frogged it after the last episode, uh, frog this part, added several repeats of the cabling as well because I wanted the sweater to be a bit longer and I had some leftover of the yarn. So in general it took me uh, 14, 14 balls, like 700 grams of yarn. Uh, I hold it double as it was 150 meters per 50 grams yarn. So I hold it double, it converted like uh 75 meters per 50 grams um yeah so and after blocking after washing after all everything it was too too drapey for my taste uh that's why i frogged it added some cables and then changed uh, the needle size for the ribbon i already saw such example in um uh, Kutova Kika pattern, uh, where the whole body was made on, I think, 5mm needles and then we switched to 3.5 or 3mm needles for the ribbon, so quite a big difference. And it worked really nice, uh, but in that case uh, the, there was like twisted ribbon. In this case, I decided to leave it as it is, not to twist it, but it was also an option for me and I considered it as well to, to make it twisted in case uh, it will not save its shape after just changing the needles to the smaller size. So I switched to 4mm needles, used all of the yarn I had, I waited, so while frogging it, um, I just separated the part for the Italian wind off needed uh, amount of yarn. Then I frogged the yarn that I needed for the ribbon itself. Uh, and the leftover I used for the cabling. Um, so currently the fit is nice. I maybe will be able to film some additional footage with me wearing this sweater, but you can also see it here. It's not floppy anymore, it's nice, and the shape is fixed, <laughs> I'm happy with it. Uh, but after frogging, and as this yarn was already washed, and it's alpaca yarn, uh, it loses its shape a bit and becomes thinner after washing, after blocking. Um, so I now have this visible line 
on uh, the half brioche. <laughs> so new issue arise after fixing the previous one. Um, well, I, I there was just a few lines with uh, uh, the thinner version of this yarn that was washed already and the rest of it was made uh, with uh, two strands from the fresh ball from the leftovers I had left after finishing it the previous time. Um, so it's it's a fine and you cannot see it on the cabling itself but it's noticeable on um, on the brioche it's on the back it's on the bottom of the back um, I'm not really bothered with it but still you may notice it at least I can notice it you know but I will not see it while wearing I don't know, maybe it will fix itself after blocking again. I just didn't want to block like a small part of it. I added like seven centimeters, I think, not a lot, several repeats of the pattern itself. So generally it fixes the issue with the ribbon, with the floppy Italian bind off, uh, fixes the issue with the length of the sweater, but <laughs> it added one more issue. Also, I am I have a few more centimeters of leftover yarn and I'm considering the fact to go over this thinner part just one more time by needle to hide it a bit under the freshly added yarn. Not sure if it's a good idea. Maybe sometime I will decide to frog it again, start from the scratch and re rework it one more time. Not sure. I already wear it a lot. I need it for this week, so I don't want to frog it again. It took me like whole day to frog all of this. Uh, it's alpaca, so it's a bit sticky while frogging. It's hard to frog. Um, so for now, I just decided to leave it as it is. Mm. And one more thing I wanted to mention here. The neckline is quite wide you can see it's really big one you may also notice it on the previous video while i was wearing this sweater so it's very really deep on the front as we have added some i've added some uh, short rows on the bottom of the bag also interesting detail about this pattern i was doing it the first time it was hard a bit to do it with half brioche at the same time and the short rows together but it added a bit more covering for the back it doesn't jump up so much but i really don't see the reason to do it on the back uh, bottom part because i think we also were able to do it on the top part of, of this bag because uh, brioche, how brioche is still uh, the same <laughs> on the top and on the bottom. Maybe that's one of the reasons to hide any uh, issues with how brioche together with short rows. I don't know. Mm, so, but it was interesting experience for me for sure. I didn't know that we can do it like this. Um, I'm also considering the fact to add an elastic to the neckline again as it's mostly alpaca yarn it doesn't fix its shape a lot um, and also there is quite a big amount of stitches on the neckline in general uh, I saw it while knitting but I was too afraid to change something because there are lots of cabling going on some increases etc so i decided that it's fine because the sweater itself is really oversized one it's big it's chunky long with all the brioche and cables so generally it doesn't bother me too but maybe i will add some elastic to it just to be sure that it will not stretch uh, during time after lots of wearing um, and I think it will fix it as well and that's the, uh, the last thing I wanted to say about this one
one more Italian bind off issue that was successfully fixed. And that's my Monday, Monday sweater. Mm. Let's see. Here is the back. Now it looks like this. Um, mm, in this case, Italian bind off was too tight last time as I decided to make it on four millimeter needles using only one strand of uh, fingering way hand dyed uh, merino yarn sock yarn merino nylon blend mm, it was really easy for me to tight uh, to make the bind off really tightly so it was too much that's why I had to rework it and um, here's what we have it's nice um, it's stretchy but at the same time it has its shape a little bit um, this one uh, is made for myself as some homeware while i'm working from home for example just as an additional layer not too warm and easy throw on garment and also interesting thing you may notice is these cables that I use for um, the sleeves to put them on hold. You see, uh, there is a hole inside this tube that, where you put your needle and easily take your stitches really fast uh, on this stitch holder. I like it a lot already. I have them in two sizes for smaller and bigger needles interesting scene uh, that I didn't know about before. Um, the next one that we also discussed in the previous, previous episode uh, were uh, Mountain Walk Socks by uh, Florence Miller. Uh, I had one sock finished and I decided to frog it completely and just leave it for a while to leave this yarn for a while to wait for some another pattern or just some inspiration from myself to create some new sock so it resulted in casting on new socks uh, and this time uh, <laughs> it's also mountain walk socks but chunky edition by florence miller um I'm not sure if it's like completely the same there are some changes already because i like making my socks uh top down mm, just my personal preference i don't know it's much easier for me to put them on to try them on while knitting that's how it works i already know that some knitters say that it's easier to control the ribbon when you start your socks top down um, but i don't know i'm on this phase where i like doing them toe up and here we go with a newly casted on project so that's all i have for now that's two toes ready i'm working on this in a magic loop technique working on two socks at the same time. I decided that's an option to have both of them completed and it removes the necessity to count rows for uh, the feet part and then uh, when you turn the heel again count and count and all the rows. I just hate it. It's really hard for me to realize if the socks are the same or not. So that's a solution that I found for myself doing it in magic loop technique. Also I selected chunky yarn. It DK weight uh, sock yarn. Uh, it's 70% wool, 30% polyamide. Uh, it's a Alize sock yarn comfort socks or I don't know I will specify it in, in description it's just regular wool blend for socks just with a nice color you see some neutral beige with uh, white parts in this uh, so that's 
what I have for now for these socks. Uh, the next work in progress that I wanted to talk about is Moby Sleepover again, but this time as I'm making it for myself, it's a bit different texture um, and feeling. It's softer than this one on me. It goes really fast because I have like fresh memories of the pattern already and um, also I took into consideration the edits I wanted to do for myself. Um, for um, So for now that's all I have here. So it's a back panel ready. You can easily see the pattern on this color, I'm sure. And here I have connected two front panels together. The next part will be this increases, same as on the back, and then I will connect it in the round. It's really soft and stretchy, thin to wear. Mm. Uh, I'm making it with... Um, I think it's DK weight. So 150 meters per 50 grams merino wool yarn, superwash merino wool uh, with um, lace uh, alpaca silk blend uh, on 3.5 millimeter needles. The change that I added here is I made the armholes even bigger than, uh, than I made here for the blue version of Moby Sleepover. And, um, that's just because of my preference. Uh, mostly I like to wear the sleepovers with some uh, shirt, uh, like on top of the shirt, and some of them have quite wide uh, sleeves, so I need more space uh, to be able to move. And in general for the sleepover I just like such uh, fit for myself. That's why I selected uh, I decided to make these armholes a bit bigger. The rest will be quite similar to this one. I will share as soon as it will be ready. I think I will finish it this month and will share some more details really soon about it. So this is it uh, for all of the finished objects and works in progress that I have recently. Mostly it's works in progress with the beginning of new year. I just have some uh, castons, uh, Castadon projects that uh, transitioned from the previous year with me and um, I just need to finish them and to be able to wear really soon uh, I hope during this month or next month the latest let's move to <clears throat> Let's move to some plans and acquisitions that I have for now. And um, I would love to start um, with the plan. I think you have already seen it in the previous video with my winter knitting plans. So I plan to create a long boucle scarf. Uh, so it's called Berlin Scarf. Uh, by Suzanne Muller uh, that is made on 6mm needles with a, um, quite chunky yarn, I would say. Uh, it's like DK weight yarn. Uh, so my option for this is cashmere merino uh, blend uh, boucle yarn that I already have um, delivered successfully. Um, not sure that you can see the color rightly. Um, this is how it looks. So it's really thin thread of yarn. So I will just hold it six strands maybe together. I just I will just combine something from this. I have 600 grams of this boucle yarn. It's really soft and nice touch. Um, so it's just a um, synthetic cord uh, that's 20% uh, of polyamide, where all the merino and cashmere uh, boucle parts are fixed. 
um, so when I ordered it, it was it was closely to some dark like black or dark gray color, but when it was delivered, I saw, noticed that it's close to some dark green color. So it seems that my destiny is to create lots of dark green colors this time. Uh, even my nails are in green <laughs> this uh, period of time. Um, I feel it more like New Year festive uh, green and sometimes it may be considered as springtime as well. So really good choice as for my taste. And um, yeah, so this is what I have for the Berlin scarf I'm going to make really soon not casted it on yet just waiting for the inspiration and finishing at least of my current works in progress to be ready to work on this one um getting to the next one um i'm also going to make a hipster beanie or some similar two by two ribbon beanie and I realized that I have some yarn in stash for this one. Um, it's Filcolana Arvata in a yellow color and I have matching silk mohair to it. So I will hold Filcolana Arvata double with one strand of silk mohair. It's a very soft one, um, not itchy at all. So I think it will be a good uh, option to create a beanie with. I was considering adding it to the porcelain sweater before um, because there is also a need of some fingering weight yarn there we uh, hold a double with silk mohair but then I checked some of the feedbacks about porcelain sweater and realized that I'm not ready to work with four balls at the same time especially if two of them will be silk mohair so I will just use this one for, for a beanie and it's bright yellow nice color to be used for such type of garment such type of accessory sorry uh that's it for the hipster beanie the next one uh that's an acquisition that i have that's a uh, sock yarn it's merino polyamide blend yarn it's heavy fingering, thick fingering weight in lavender. I just decided to buy this one together with a booklet because why not? It's beautiful and nice. I love it a lot. I like lavender color, so I decided to try to <laughs> make one more pair of socks with such a beautiful and nice yarn. I have not selected a pattern for this one, but maybe it will be just a simple vanilla socks for having some rest for, from bouclet and cabling and color work, etc. We will see. The next acquisition that I have in plans to cast on really soon um, it's merino wool uh, yarn for sweater number 15 by my favorite since knitwear um, uh, the pattern calls for light fingering weight yarn so it's three ply that's what i have here so i have here two ply you see in dark green color uh, I have one more holder like this with one strand, so I have three of them uh, already and I'm just waiting for some mohair to arrive because it was quite hard for me to find matching mohair for this. Um, as soon as it arrives I will cast it on for sure because I just wanted to be ready and to fit my nails. Um, that's it, I guess, for the sweater number 15 lens. And the last but not least, definitely, is the yarn 
that I have just received from Sandin's Garn for my Celeste sweater. Uh, I got inspiration from different Ravelry projects, uh, also checked the colors that uh, Petit Need used for her samples and finally found the best match for myself. Um, so, um, the button calls for Pyrkind uh, in different colors. It's 100% Norwegian wool yarn. I heard that some people can find it itchy and as Celeste sweater has high neck, I was not sure if I am ready to have such a high neck sweater with color work that I will spend a lot of time on to be made with 100% wool. That's why I switched to Sunday by Saint Nescar. Also saw some people making this from double Sunday, but I decided to use Sunday held double just because I don't want to have lots of ends to be weaved in. Maybe that's naive because it's already color work and a lot of ends will be there, but who knows? I hope it will help. So, this is my color selection for Celeste sweater. The main color, let's go by, by, one by one. <clears throat> so, uh, the main color is uh, regular Sunday. I think it's called marzipan color. <clears throat> I, I am going to hold it double, uh, so the color is 2321, such a nice beige color, but without this yellow part in this, or pink sometimes, it depends, some of them can have different additional colors in, in the back, so just a regular tone of beige yarn I like a lot. Um, few of the next ones. This one is uh, Sunday by Petit Knit collaboration. Um, so it's soft shade of uh, blue color, light blue. So this one was expected to match well with this dark blue like navy color I think these two look really nice together um, the petite knit shade is 6050 the light blue and the dark blue is uh, 5882 I will also put all of them into description because I know how hard it is to find the perfect matching colors. Um, the next one will be such a sand shade, also shade uh, colored by Petit Need. Uh, it's uh, 2542, such a sandy shade. And they, there was no needed brown color that I wanted to use, so I <laughs> chose a double Sunday. It was simple logical to me, because single Sunday, it's like held doubles, quite similar to a double Sunday. I don't know. We will see if it will work. The shade is uh, 3161, so these two are expected to go nice together. So here it is for the color work, four shades for the color work. I like these colors. I have lots of beige uh, colors uh, in my wardrobe. Also I have lots of bluish shades. So this should work well with all of my wardrobe. <laughs> that was the plan. So let's see it one more time. The main color is the lighter one and the rest of them will be color works. Um, so, looking forward to starting my Celeste sweater now. Um, 
checking all the Ravel recommends and uh, waiting for having my own, for sure. Mm. This is it for today. That was everything I wanted to share with you and the update from the last, last podcast. Um, hope you enjoyed this video as I am. I got some inspiration from myself and have some good time spent with me. Um, please let me know if you are also going to start working on some of these projects or looking for some yarn maybe, uh, maybe some yarn feedback and more details is needed from me. Just let me know. Um, follow for some more episodes coming soon. I will do my best to record all the progress I have on the current whips and castons, future castons. Um, have a nice meeting and see you. Bye bye.